Hello and welcome to Grace Church's online Sunday service. My name is Nairi and I'm really happy to welcome you this morning. Hope you've been having a good week. It feels like spring is in the air, which is exciting for some of us who like the warmth and sad for those who are hoping to get a little bit more ice skating in. I've been enjoying the sunshine and spring flowers. Today we are finishing up our, our Sunday series on Proverbs and James is going to be speaking to us about knowing Jesus. Steve will also be leading us in a time of worship together. As of next week, we are starting a new series as we head into the season of Easter. A big thank you to everybody who has contributed to and organised the Lent readings that we've had on our WhatsApp. They've been really encouraging to many of us, so thank you for that. Well, I wish you a wonderful day and a wonderful week ahead, and now I'll hand over to the team. Bye-bye. Hello, Great Church. I hope you all are doing well. I have been given some questions uh, from Fiona, and I'll try to answer them. Uh, the first question is, what is your name? My name is Lydia, uh, Lydia Askram, and I've been a part of Grace Church for about five, six years. And I just have to say, it's been an amazing journey to be part of this uh, church. I've seen God bless Grace Church in so many ways. Um, just five years ago, we were, about five, year ago, five years ago, we were gathering at Phil's and Emma's place. And from there, we just kept expanding and expanding. And now we see so many being part of this church. Um, so yeah, I love it. Question two, what do you do for work? So I'm a student care coordinator. Uh, I work for an English school. And what that means is I'm kind of like a, a mediator between the school and external agencies. So like mental health services, um, social services and the police and so on. Uh, so I work mainly with um, children and adolescents with um, social, behavioral and psychological needs. Um, yeah, and I find it very rewarding. Uh, question three, how long have you lived in Stockholm? Well, I've been, I'm born and raised in Stockholm, uh, but I have lived in London for many years as well. So that's why when I came back, I wanted to be a part of a multicultural church uh, because English, um, comes very natural for me to speak. Number four, if you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would that be? I would have to go for my favorite meal, which is lasagna. Uh, I think I will get tired of it eventually, but yeah, that's my choice. Uh, number five, what's the best piece of advice you have ever been given? Uh, I have to say the advice that Jesus gave walking on earth, um, but also the, the whole Bible is full of advices and wisdom, but if I would pick one, I would probably say, uh, do to others what would what you would like others to do to you. Uh, yeah, so that's for me. And have a blessed day. And yeah, hope to see you everyone soon. Bye. Hey, good morning, church. Let's get ready to worship together. Let's just start in prayer. God, we just thank you for the life you've given us. Lord, we thank you for this day. And God, we want to take this moment to prepare our hearts uh, to bring you an offering of praise, God, wherever, wherever we're at. Lord, we ask that you to stir up our hearts and our minds with love and adoration for Jesus Christ. And God, we come to you fully surrendered, looking to you. <laughs> we depend on you. And Lord, we thank you for all the gifts and the blessings you've given us. And Lord, now we want to bring you something, Lord, to bless you. I see his body breaking I see his fingers bleed I see the darkness tremble at the ground below his feet And in the darkest hour Calvary He was sweetly broken 
So come on into the waters, come let the broken sing Come on you sons and daughters, his love changes everything Come when the fear is fighting, you find in the risen king Come on and let the light in, your love changes everything I will fear no evil You'll never let me go You'll never let me go Ephesians 5.19 tells us to speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. And I've been thinking about how to do this. How do I speak this way instead of just reading these things? So I found a verse that inspired me, and I'm going to speak to you with my psalm. And the verse that inspired this says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters. 
so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ returns, says Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. So what really matters? Well, it's this life that I'm coming to know where joy erupts and peace overflows. This stream of life from deep inside satisfies my thirst and feeds my soul. Jesus brings me from glory to glory. He's close in the night and then comes the morning. Let's look to the one, God's mighty son, and watch our downcast souls be sent soaring. This is what matters. Towards love I was called, towards love now I walk. My heart's been shaped and changed by a good, merciful God. We have the mind of Christ. Each day we can walk more right. Our counselor is close to guide us where to go, keeping our path in the light. This is what matters. I've been washed in the blood, once a stranger, now a son. My cold heart was flameless, now it's pure and blameless ready for this race that I run. It's no longer I who live. World, what do I have to give? But Christ in me, the master who sets free, I'm no longer a slave to sin. This is what matters. God's grace, day in, day out. How many days do I have now? Each clock tick is a generous gift. God, I will praise you now. Till the day I die or the day you arrive, I'm fixed on your word, the truths I've never heard, while I watch the eastern sky. God, you are what matters. You are with us, oh God. Cause you are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. Yes, I worship you. Yes, you are here, working in this place. I worship you. And I worship you. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Cause you are here, touching every.
Dear Father, I pray that you help us today to rest and dwell in your presence. And as we rest with you, help us enjoy your wonderful peace, which cannot be compared with anything. Please teach us your way, your wisdom. I pray for today's sermon message that you use it to reshape the way we think. Take the world out of us, make us more like you. Please search our hearts and fix our thoughts and intentions. We need you. Please draw us near to you to discover more about who you are and what you, you have called us to do. Open our hearts to hear your message today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Morning everyone. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 to 13. The Transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Then the disciples heard this. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, to be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognise him, but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. Good morning, Grace Church. Uh, My name's James, and uh, I'll be speaking this morning. Uh, In the final part of our series, uh, we've had a a five-part series on, on knowing uh, different things basically based around Proverbs. Uh, I think we had knowing, uh, knowing wisdom, knowing others, knowing your heart uh, and knowing the way. Uh, and today we're, we're going to be dipping out of Proverbs. Uh, we're going to be talking about knowing Jesus. Now why is this, why is this so important? You know this is, this is a guy who lived 2,000 years ago in a country a, a long way from us, in a, in a time completely different. You know, first century Middle Eastern life was very, very different to 21st century Swedish, Swedish life. Jesus was on earth for around 30 years, a little bit more, and yet that time he spent on earth had profound consequences uh, for everyone who's come before him and everyone who's lived after him. The whole of the Bible is centered around Jesus. The whole of human history is shaped around Jesus. And I honestly believe if we know Jesus, we can live how we were created to live. So I want to look at four things this morning, four sort of aspects of knowing Jesus and how we can do that and what that means. The first thing is to know Jesus' nature. To know Jesus' as nature, to know who he is, to understand who Jesus is. It's very hard to deny the existence of Jesus. There are so many um, versions, uh, so many copies uh, of eyewitness accounts that testify to Jesus being a person who, who was on earth. But many deny the significance People say he was a good man, 
uh, he was a good teacher and there's a there's a whole uh, sort of thing about Jesus could really only be three things he could be, either be mad he could be bad or he could be God because he went around saying that he was God so he has to be one of those three things but as we read in that passage or as Fiona read for us in Matthew 17 this was a moment when for Jesus' followers, the disciples, his nature was perhaps made clearer than it had been before. It's quite an account, isn't it? Quite a remarkable thing. Jesus had been spending quite a bit of time uh, with the disciples. They'd seen some amazing things by this point. This is quite late on in his life. They'd seen what Jesus could do. They'd heard his preaching. Uh, and he goes up onto this mountaintop. He goes up there with his with his closest friends, his closest followers. And suddenly there's this, this bright light and you have these legends from the Old Testament. I, I don't know how they recognized it, but it seems there's no doubt that this was Moses and Elijah. And Peter is so excited, isn't he? He, he wants to kind of hang out. It's like he wants to start a little, uh, little home group here. He wants to build a shelter. Uh, he says, good for us to be here. And then if this whole thing isn't amazing enough, you have this cloud comes down. They're all covered. There's a voice from heaven saying, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. The cloud lifts. The cloud clears. Moses and Elijah are gone. There's just Jesus the proclaimed Son of God. God himself come to earth in human form. This, uh, this account was so significant, so amazing, uh, that all th uh, sorry, that three out of the four Gospel writers record it. Uh, Luke actually records even more detail. He records that the disciples were a little bit sleepy. Now imagine waking up to that. Imagine waking up to this revelation that Jesus Christ was the Son of God come down to earth in whom he was well pleased. Perhaps at first they thought it was a dream, but there was no doubt as they looked back. Peter refers to this in one of his letters. He says, for we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. Peter saw Jesus receiving this, this glory, this honour from God, and he stayed with him for his whole life. Now this was just one incident of many that establishes Jesus' divine nature. We see him healing the sick. We, we read of him doing miracles. He made the blind to see, turned water into wine. He was fully God. It states in uh, John chapter 10 that Jesus and the Father are one. And yet he was also fully man. We have this amazing account, don't we, uh, in another of the Gospels where uh, Jesus and some of the disciples are traveling in a boat uh, and there's a, there's a furious storm. The waves are breaking over the boat and it was nearly swamped. And Jesus is asleep. He's asleep in the stern of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples wake him up and they say, don't you care if we drown? He says, Jesus gets up, rebukes the wind and says to the waves, quiet, be still. And the wind died down and it was completely calm. It seems Jesus' nature is uh, is revealed amazingly in just that one incident. On the one hand, he is a human. We see Jesus being hungry. We see Jesus being tired. And in this moment, he's asleep. Then like that, he's awake. He commands the waves to stop. He commands the sea to be calm. He's gone from fully man and he's fully God. That is who Jesus is. That is his nature. It's extremely hard for us to get our head around because with most things in life, the more you become one thing, the, the less you become another. Yeah, the Bible is very clear. Jesus was fully man and he was fully God. That is his nature. 
That is who Jesus was. So we need to know Jesus' nature. We need to know exactly who he was. But I think the second thing that we should consider as we, as we try to know Jesus is to know his purpose. To know Jesus' pur- purpose. And Paul tells Timothy this very simply. He writes in, uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Jesus did, did some amazing things. Some of the teaching of Jesus um, that, we, that we have is, is quite unique to the Bible. And the letters built on it, the Old Testament points forward to it. But Jesus didn't come to heal the sick. He didn't come to teach. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Jesus himself writes in John, doesn't he? Or spoke in John, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. I don't know if you've been following the, uh, the, the Lent readings or maybe you've been doing a plan of your own. Um, but it, it's fascinating as, as you approach Jerusalem, uh, as you approach the cross, as you approach what happened at Easter, uh, it's almost as Jesus becomes more and more uh, focused, more and more single-minded. He came to die on the cross that we might be saved. All the moments, all the events of his life led up to that one moment. He told the disciples about it, didn't he? We see opposition from the Pharisees. Many didn't believe him. Others rebuked him. Peter at one point takes him to one side and says, No, Jesus, this isn't isn't why you're here. Jesus rebukes him. Because Jesus' purpose was clear. He came to earth to die on the cross that we might be saved. This is why he's such an important person. This is why we need to know about this man from 2,000 years ago. It's why we need to understand the nature of this man who was both man and God. And if we understand his nature, we need to understand his purpose. He came to live on earth in perfect ways, to live as a man perfect without fault, that he could take the punishment for our sins when he died on the cross. Sounds a strange thing, doesn't it? Because so many religions and so many Ways of life will say, actually, we just need to do good things. That we balance out the bad with the good. And of course, as a, as a church, we believe there is a way to live your life. There are things we should do and there are things we shouldn't do. But we're not saved through that. We're saved through Jesus. We're saved through Jesus taking the punishment for our sins on him. This simple act carried out in pain and anguish on the cross, was Jesus' purpose. And it's so important that we know his purpose. It was to die, that we might be saved. So we've seen Jesus' nature. We've seen Jesus' purpose. I think it's important that we know Jesus' character. I think it's important, isn't it, when you consider a man like Jesus who lived... Such an amazing life, such an important life. We, we should want to know more about him, shouldn't we? It's kind of logical when somebody's done so much for you that you'd want to know about them. Paul talks about how um, husband and wife kind of mirrors the church and Christ. And obviously as a, as a husband and wife, you want to know each other more. So it should be with us as the church, as Christ's people. We should want to know him more. We should want to know more about his character as well as his nature and purpose. So if you read through the Gospels, look not just for his teachings, not just for his words, but look for his character. Look how he lived a life full of wisdom, full of grace, full of knowledge, full of humility and compassion. Because, of course, we're not just to know Jesus' character as some, of some academic interest. 
get to know about the man from the book. We're to know about Jesus' character so that we can emulate him, so that we can be imitators of Christ. Paul writes in Philippians, in those well-known verses, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. We are to be like Christ. We are to live our lives like Christ. We have an attitude of Christ Jesus, who could have been the most arrogant, the most proud person. He had everything. He was the most important person in the history of the world. And then he was humble. He humbled himself in obedience. We're to know him. We're to know his character. We're to emulate him. This is one of the amazing things about Jesus. I, I love a good autobiography or, or a biography. I love uh, I love reading, uh, especially sports biographies. Muhammad Ali, uh, Nigel Mansell, Freddie Flintoff. This is very British centric. I do apologise. Um, Scott Jurek, ultra marathon runner. I love reading all about them. And some of them are very inspiring. But I don't want to be exactly like them. And I don't wake up every day thinking I need to be more and more like Freddie Flintoff. I need to be more and more like Muhammad Ali. But it should be like that with Jesus. As we know more about his character through the Bible, we should aim to be more like him. To live in that compassionate, humble, obedient way. So we're to know his his nature, we're to know his purpose, we're to know his character. And finally, I think, to know Jesus, we need to know his teaching. I'd really like to encourage you to know his teachings better through the Bible. Jesus came at a time when uh, people had got bogged down. Uh, the, the Jews, God's chosen people, had just got bogged down in, in laws, in regulations. It had become about rules. The Ten Commandments had been turned into kind of 250 plus very specific rules and regulations that you had to try and keep. Jesus turned all this on his head, didn't he? Jesus talked about the relationship between man and God that very few had grasped. Jesus explained his role in salvation. Jesus preached the thousands. Jesus preached the great parables. The parable of the prodigal son, the parable of the Good Samaritan, these things that even in modern society 2,000 years on ring true. He challenged as well some of the teachings of Jesus about commitment, about the cost of following him. They're tough to read. They're even tougher to put into practice. But Jesus' teachings have stood the test of time like no other. I'm always struck when I watch a film from even 25 30 years ago, uh, often they, they just haven't really stood the test of time. Uh, there are a few exceptions. Back to the Future, of course, timeless classic. Uh, but I remember a few of us, uh, we, we stayed in a little cottage and they didn't have many things to watch. And we ended up watching The Mask with Jim Carrey. Now, apologies if it's your favourite film. Um, but it was terrible. It just hadn't aged well. It, things that maybe seemed funny 25 years ago didn't seem so funny now. But Jesus' teachings, they stood the test of time. If you look around at what's happening in society, if you look at how isolated people are, if you look at how broken people are, they need Jesus' teachings more than ever. If you look at the challenges in your own life, the things that you struggle with, the sense of injustice perhaps, the sense of hardship, the sense of hopelessness. We need Jesus' teachings 
more than ever. They've stood the test of time. They're as relevant now as they were 2,000 years ago. So practically speaking, what do we do? What, what can we do to know Jesus more? And the place I would urge you to start and finish is in the Bible. Look for Jesus. Seek him out. It's a great time of year, isn't it, to be doing the, the, the Lent readings, to be reading of Jesus' life on earth. And of course, the, the Gospels are a fantastic place to start when you look for Jesus. But of course, Paul also talked about Jesus. Peter talked about Jesus. All the writings after Jesus talk about him, refer to his teachings, refer to his life, refer to his sacrifice. But it's not just the New Testament you'll see Jesus. If you look for Jesus, you'll find him in the Old as well. You'll find Jesus through prophecies. As early as Genesis, Jesus is prophesied about. Many of the Old Testament books look forward to Jesus. You'll find him in the Old Testament as an example. The, all the sacrifices in Leviticus, if you look at some of the details, they're amazing how they point so clearly to Jesus. He was the lamb that was slain. He was the scapegoat for our sins. It was his blood that was shed on our behalf. You will find Jesus everywhere you look in the Bible. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 40. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Jesus is that rock. Jesus is that firm place to stand. You will find Jesus throughout the Bible. Through Old Testament, through New Testament, through prophecies, through Psalms, through Gospels, through letters. The Bible is about Jesus. First it points forward to him then it tells you about him, then it looks back to him. It's so important that we know Jesus and the best place to start and the best place to finish is in the Bible. I can't, I can't really close without finishing with, with just maybe a little bit of a warning because the, the first and most important thing is to know Jesus as your saviour, to ask him into your life, to repent, to ask for forgiveness for your sins ask that he takes the burden that is yours that's your starting point but then seek him out seek him out through scripture seek him out in conversation with your friends seek him out in conversation with those who know him seek to know Jesus more in any way you can seek to pray to him to come before him to cast all your troubles on him and as it says in Hebrews 12, fix your eyes firmly on him. Because if you seek him with all your heart, you will surely find him. So let's seek to know Jesus. And let's seek to be more like Jesus. Let's seek to be like him in how we live, in our attitude, and in our longing to tell others of what he did. Amen. Hi Grace Church. Um... First, uh, thanks to James and the team for today. Uh, really great and encouraging to keep on pursuing Jesus, to love Jesus uh, with all of our heart, mind, soul and strength and to love our neighbours as ourselves. I just wanted to give you a very quick uh, update on some changes um, we're going to just be making to our Sunday live stream. Um, <clears throat> as you know, the situation with the pandemic seems to be ongoing in Sweden and our expectation is is that over the next few months we'll continue to need to be online um, with before while we wait for the situation to improve so keep praying um, and so while over the next few months hopefully the weather will start to improve the we'll be a bit more outside and and so what we want to do is we're gonna from next week we're gonna move our live stream to a new time we're gonna move it from uh, uh, 11 to 12 30 to 9.30 to, so that we're done even with a call by 11. And I'll give you two reasons uh, for that. The first is, is what is Sunday for? Sunday, the Sabbath, the theological reason is for two things. is to rest from work 
but not so that we do nothing, but so that we do two things. That we worship, that we love God with all of our heart, mind, soul and strength, and two, that we love our neighbour. It's a, it's a time to be with people uh, and to uh, be, give ourselves an opportunity to deepen fellowship, to deepen relationship and to love our neighbour. And so what we want to do is to encourage you to use your Sunday to do those two things, to love God, and so we're gonna, and then to spend time with people deepening your relationships, either with your, your small group or with uh, together with friends from church to connect with others. It might be through being outside and going for a walk, whatever it might be, that just allows you to do that. So we wanna move the time earlier in the day and uh, uh, so that there's more of your time into your day to be able to, uh, to do those two things. And uh, the video will still be recorded and released on YouTube. And so if uh, 9.30 is an early slot for you or a late slot for you, um, then uh, you'll still be able to watch the video at your choosing. We'll be moving it to 9.30. And so we wanna encourage you to think through, hey, I wanna think about my uh, Sunday. How, who can a few of us see together? You might not be able to be a big group, um, what can we do? If there's a neighbour I'd love to introduce to some of our friends from church. Uh, maybe let's, let's, meet, let's meet up somewhere that you're able to do that in a safe and good way, socially distanced, all the, all the normal rules. Um, but we want to think about your Sundays from a love God, love uh, your neighbour point of view. And remember we talked about this when we in our Grow series on rest, and I'll put that uh, link in. Um, and so yeah, please think about it like this. And so new time from next week, 9.30, uh, our videos are no more than an hour, so it'll be 9.30 to 10.30 max. As soon as that's finished, we're gonna hop, go sooner into the call, um, and so it'll come straight after, whenever the, the, talk, the video's finished, we're gonna go straight into the call to pray, to see one another, to greet one another, people that we might not see, to remind ourselves that we're one church across the city, uh, and then we will, um, and then say, and then we'll, you know, with a focus on, hey, let's use our days for the glory of God, Let's use our time for him. Let's seek first him and love him and, and, and see how we can reach, even in this time, be praying to reach out uh, to others with the, with the good news of Jesus Christ. Okay, bless you guys. Have a great week. Um, and uh, we, will, we will see or I hope speak or in some way connect with you soon. God bless you.